I am Mr. Teru. Okay, so maybe you just learned how to graph inequalities and possibly learn how to graph nonlinear inequalities. Because in this video, we're going to be talking about graphing systems of inequalities. The first example will have two linear inequalities. The second example will have two nonlinear inequalities. So how do you do this? Well, first you graph and shade each of the inequalities, just like they're a separate question. Just put them on the same x and y axis, though. The area that has all of the overlapped shading, now both of my examples are going to have two inequalities, but maybe you have like three and four inequalities. If you had three inequalities, then the place on your graph where all three shadings overlapped or in my case where I have two, the overlapped area is going to be what describes the actual solution set to your system of inequalities. And then if you were to pick a point within that overlapped area, it should make every inequality in your system true or be a solution for them. So then what we're going to be concerned with is testing the intersection point between the inequalities. In other words, where do the graphs intersect? Now, you might want to actually find that intersection point, but you can also sort of figure this out just logically by looking at it. You know, are those intersection points going to be closed or open dots? We'll be talking about that as we work through our two examples, which is coming right up because i got nothing else to say. First example, here is our system of linear inequalities. We know that because all of our exponents are just exponents of 1. Now we're going to put these in the slope-intercept form because that is the easiest way to graph a line, and it is also very easy to shade those inequalities when y is by itself. So we're going to take this inequality, we're going to subtract both sides by 4x, and get 5y is less than or equal to negative 4x plus 10, and divide everything by 5. So we get y is less than or equal to negative 4 fifths x, plus 2. Okay, well, now that we have it written in slope-intercept form, it's y is less than or equal to, so it'll be a solid line, and because my y term is alone, I can say y is less than, and we're going to shade down because that's the way our y values get small, uh, smaller. We have a slope, which is negative 4 fifths, so we're going to go down because the slope is negative, and then doesn't really have to be this way, but I do teach slope as going left to right, like you read the graph, like you read a book, so always to the right for the uh, run value in the denominator. And then b, our constant at the end of our slope-intercept form is our y-intercept again, so b is going to be equal to 2, and <clears throat> let's not forget, we do the y-intercept first, and then we work on the slope. So we're going to come over here, and again with the equal sign, we're going to make a, a solid line. This line's going to cross the y-axis at 2. I've got my tick marks here. Hold on a second. You can hear that grumbling. That's my coffee about ready. Uh, we have a y-intercept of 2. And from there, we're going to go down 4 and over 5. So from this y-intercept, we're going to go down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and do our best to get a somewhat straight line and hit the points as closely as possible. Now the second inequality. Let's do this one in yellow. So we're going to get this solved for y by dividing both sides by 2, or dividing everything by 2. And we get y is greater than 3 over 2x minus 6. Now, with both of these examples, I'm not switching the direction of the inequality because I'm not multiplying or dividing both sides of the inequality by a negative number. That's really the only time that working with an inequality as far as solving is uh, drastically different than working with an equation. Of course, I'm pausing because I'm like, well, you know, what happens if there's an absolute value? But for these linear functions or linear inequalities. So we have a slope which is equal to 3 over 2, so it's going to be up 3 and over 2 from our y-intercept of six, uh, negative 6. Can't forget that negative sign. Again, y-intercept first and slope second from the y-intercept. So negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
From that y-intercept of negative 6, we're going to go up 3 and over 2 again. So up 3 over 2. And this is only y is greater than, not greater than or equal to. So we're going to want to do a dotted line. Uh, something like that. Now, I haven't done any shading yet. So <clears throat> this is y is less than or equal to. y values get smaller as you go down the graph. So we're going to shade below the white line. y is greater than, so we're going to shade above it, above the yellow line. And the intersection point of all the shading is the solution. Those points within that shaded area will be solution sets to the system of inequalities. In other words, it will make both inequalities true, not just one of them. And that is going to be this area over here where all of our shading is overlapping. Now, 0, 0 is part of that overlap shaded area. So if I put 0, 0 in here, uh, 4 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, and 0 is indeed less than or equal to 10. If I put 0, 0 here, I have 2 times 0, which is 0. I have 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 12. So if I put the test point of 0, 0 into this inequality, I have 0 is greater than negative 12, which indeed it is. I'll be right back to finish this example. Okay, so we have our graphs up, we have the shading done. Now, what about this intersection point? Now, just to recap, this is going to extend the video, uh, and I just want to make sure you understand completely what's going on, but we will be able to, we really should be able to determine whether this intersection point here is or should be shaded in or not just by looking at the work that we've done so far. But to just take it to the nth degree and make, really make sure you can see what's going on, let's actually find that point and test it in our inequalities. So <clears throat> our inequalities now are set you know, basically they're both set equal to y. So if I want to find this intersection point with two inequalities, and we're going to act like these are equations as we work through this, as two equations set equal to y, substitution is the natural way of finding the intersection point, finding the solution to the systems of equations. And I'll probably run out of room here as I try and do this. So we're going to have negative 4 fifths x plus 2 is equal to 3 halves x minus 6. And we're going to solve this for x, plug it back into one of the equations, find y. We have fractions and, well, I certainly as a math teacher would like you to understand how to work with fractions. They are still, they, they're, they're cumbersome. So we're going to multiply this entire equation through by 10 because the 5 will cancel out with 10, and so will the 2, and I can get rid of my fractions. So 10 times negative 4 fifths. Well, 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 2 times negative 4 is negative 8x. And then 10 times 2 is 20. 10 now going into our fourth term. 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5, and 5 times 3 is 15. And then finally, 10 times negative 6, which is negative 60. Okay, <clears throat> we got 1x, or we have an x on both sides. Let's get it together and solve. Add both sides by 8x. And add both sides by 60. Doing a couple of things at once just to save space. We have 80 equals 23x. And here you can start to see that I made up my own problem instead of uh, being dependent on um, a textbook problem because I'm going to get a fraction. And we get x equals 23, 80 over 23. Now we're going to take this and just to follow my notes, we're going to plug it into this inequality, this equation. Uh, that's how I'm dealing with it. We're going to plug this x into here and find the y value. So y is equal to 3 halves times 80 over 23 minus 6. The 2 and the 80 are going to cancel out to be 40. 
and nothing else is going to cancel. So we have 30 times 40 is 120 over 23, and then that minus 6, you'll need a common denominator. So multiply that top and bottom by 23, and we get the y value of negative 18 over 23. So this intersection point is 80 over 23 comma negative 18 over 23. Now, is that a uh, solution point? Well, oh, like I said, I was going to run out of space. So let me get this out of here. And so here's our, solu here's our intersection point between these two inequalities. Now, with this equal sign, y is less than or equal to negative 4 fifths x uh, plus 2, the line is part of the solution set. That's why with this equal sign, we have a solid line. But with the dotted line, the y is greater than 3 halves x minus 6. That line is not actually part of the solution set. And we're going to validate why this should be an open dot because of that greater than symbol or the fact that this is a dotted line. We're going to take this intersection point, plug it into here. We have negative 18 over 23 equals 3 halves times our x value of 80 over 23 minus 6. Here we're going to have, again, our cancellation. The 2 and the 80 are going to cancel out to be uh, equal to 40. Could have just written my previous answer up. <clears throat> we're going to have negative 18 over 23. I think you're going to know what this is going to come out to, right? 3 times 40 is 120 over 23 minus 6. And that's what I just got done doing that I erased. So this comes out to be negative 18 over 23 equals, again, negative 18 over 23. But you might have noticed something. I accidentally, just because I'm in a bit of a hurry to finish this example, wrote equals instead of greater than. So if I come back in here and fill in the inequality that was actually in the original problem, we have greater than, greater than. Um, I never divided both sides by a negative number or multiplied both sides by a negative number, so the inequality never changes. And negative 18 over 23 is not greater than negative 18 over 23. It is equal. So it is not a solution. And thus, this should be an open dot. And here's the deal. Basically, every time a solid line intersects a dotted line, that point will not be a solution to both of the inequalities. It will only be a solution to the inequality that gave you the solid line, not the dotted one. So thus, make it an open dot. One more example where it's not. Last example. The sum of x and y is at most 6. The x and y, the x variable added to the product of 2 and y does not exceed 10. Well, <clears throat> clearly it's a word problem, which means we need to come up with some equations. So, the sum of x and y is at most 6. Well, sum means at, so the sum of x and y is at most 6. That means the sum can be 6, but will not be over, so less than or equal to 6. And then finally, the x variable added to the product of 2 and y does not exceed 10. So the x variable, okay, x added to the product of 2 and y. Okay, product, product means multiplication. 2 and y does not exceed but can be 10. Does not exceed means it can't be more than 10. So uh, this is cannot exceed 10, so 10, it can be smaller than 10, less than, or equal to. So this could be basically the first example. I'll do this much quicker this time, except of course it started off as a word problem. This, <clears throat> if you subtract both sides by x, becomes y is less than or equal to negative x plus 6. So we have a y-intercept of 6. We have a slope which is negative 1, so that means we're going to go All slopes should be a rise and a run. All slopes should look like a fraction. So down 1 over 1. 
We do have an equal sign in our inequality, so solid line. And I think I've got an interruption here. Let me uh, pause for a second. All right, so sorry about the interruption there. Uh, this is less than or equal to, so all we have to add is the shading. Moving on to our last inequality in the system, which is y is, oh here we go, x plus 2y, I forgot what I was doing, x plus 2y is less than or equal to 10. We're going to bring the x over with subtraction because it's positive and get 2y is less than or equal to 10. Well, let's do negative x plus 10. Divide everything by 2 and we get y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 5. That means we have a y-intercept of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, slope is negative 1 over 2, so down 1 and over 2. Again, we have an equal sign here, so our line is going to be solid. Whoops, a little crooked there. And it's y is less than or equal to. So we're going to shade below that yellow line as well. And ultimately the solution set again, the solution set is the overlap of the two shaded regions, which is this area right here. And again, uh, with the equal sign on both of these inequalities, each of the lines are a solution set as well as all the shaded areas. So this intersection point should be a solid line. I hope that's helped you understand how to graph systems of uh, inequalities. I'm Mr. Teru. Go to your homework.